String theory sounds awesome on paper. What if everything was made of strings? What if all the forces in nature were really composed of tiny little vibrating spring, strings? Keep saying springs, I don't know why. What if all the building blocks, the electrons and the neutrinos and the quarks were also all made of vibrating s strings? And they all just like interact all the time and that builds up the natural world. And we don't need to know, we don't need an experiment to tell us the electron mass because it's all just vibrating strings and the strings will just tell us what the electron mass is and they'll tell us what the speed of light is and we'll tell it will tell us the strength of gravity it will just all come out of the physics this sounds great this is a theory of everything this is a unified framework for understanding all of nature pretty attractive right and it automatically includes gravity so baked into string theory you have a quantum description of gravity in order to make this work, your string theory needs some extra dimensions. There need to be 10 total dimensions in our universe, one of time, three that are macroscopic, and six that are all bundled up into a tiny little volume no bigger than the Planck scale. Fine. This framework also requires something called supersymmetry, which allows you to connect the fermions of our world to the bosons of our world. Okay, great. And in the 1990s, we had five competing string theories. Yeah. Each one claiming to be the string theory. But here's the thing. There, there is really no such thing as string theory. There's no, there's no single set of equations that we can point to, that we can print on a t-shirt, that we can say, yes, this is what governs our natural world. In string theory, we only have approximations. We have guesses. We have attempts of, for theories that try to get at that actual accurate final theory, but we actually don't know if we're really close or we're way off base. There's no way to tell until you actually have the final theory. And with the inclusion of supersymmetry and because of all these approximations, in the 90s, we had five different competing theories, and they looked radically different. Some of them only allowed closed strings. Some had open strings. Uh, just, just various, various combinations of, of how, the, how the universe works. This was kind of embarrassing, right? And a lot of string theorists ended up leaving the field, moving on to other things, because that's just kind of weird and nobody likes it. Until 1995. And in 1995, a very eminent and super smart dude named Edward Witten uh, was at a strings conference. A, it was at the point in the 90s where there were annual strings conferences, and there still are today. But he gave a talk. And he talked about string theory and he talked about these five different string theories and they have like terrible names like type one, type two B, they sound like diseases, uh, E8 times E8, heterotic, like it's just like, oh, like, like you, you think you, you might contract one of these string theories on a vacation to Malaysia or something. But anyway, he's giving a talk and he's like, guys, I've been thinking, you know, he does that a lot. He's like, you know how we have these five different conceptions of string theory? I wonder if they're really all the same. Or I wonder if they're all just aspects of a single larger unified theory. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it looks like. And I'm going to call it M theory. M could be for mystery. M can be for membrane. M can be for master. M can be for Manchengo. There can be lots of options for the letter M, but we don't know. We're just going to call it M theory. And everyone's like, you know what? If Edward Winton thinks so, he's probably on us on this, so we should probably work on that. And what they did find, what they did find, this isn't proven. This isn't proven. This is conjectured that all five string theories that we have, and they're still around today, are related to each other. Well, we have identified these relationships. For example, uh, if you pick one random string theory, there's various amounts of strength of 
coupling between the strings. Like when two strings come together and vibrate as a single string, merge together, and then they disconnect and go their separate ways, we don't know how strong that is, like how attracted are strings to each other. This is a fundamental number, a cornerstone of string theory. String theory itself can't tell us what that number is, or we don't think it can. Um, and we just don't know how strong that is. It turns out, if you have a theory, a string theory, like one of your five, with, and you ramp up that strength, that connection strength between the strings to a very high number, you say, wow, the strings in this theory like really love each other. It turns out you end up in another one of the string theories with a very weak coupling. Just by doing that, but just by cranking up the intensity in one of your theories, you end up in your other theory. So it turns out that these two theories are actually exploring the exact same thing. There's another kind of, and this is called a duality, by the way, and there's another duality where some strings can wrap around a dimension and a theory with strings wrapping around in one direction while being free in another direction can be dual, can be mapped to another theory where the strings move in the are free in the wrapped up dimension and then they wrap up in the free dimension. You just swap those out and you get, you get the other theory. And then you can make some connections, some dualities that don't match up to any of the five theories. Instead, they go somewhere else, somewhere no one's ever gone before. And we think that might be scratching the surface of M theory. So M theory is like the mother theory. And these five string theories are just like little corners, little edge cases. We thought these five, for a long time, we thought these five different string theories were like five different planets. We didn't know what the planets were like. We just had studied little bits and pieces, little islands on each of these five planets. We were trying to decide which planet is actually the one, the string theory. M theory says, no, 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 no. We've been looking at the same planet this whole time. Just the planet is way bigger than we thought. In order for M theory to work, there aren't 10 dimensions in our universe. There are 11. But for the most part, that 11th dimension just doesn't play a large role. And so that's why it doesn't appear in any of the five individual string theories. But it's still there. And in, in, in addition to strings, you can have two-dimensional sheets. You can have three-dimensional blobs. You can have five-dimensional hyper blobs. These are called brains, B-R-N-A-E-S, and D-brains. They're called D-brains. I'm not making any of this up. For dimensional brains, it's just a naming thing. Who cares? It's just strings in higher dimension. Those appear to be the fundamental object. We're not exactly sure. We had this realization, we didn't have this realization in the mid 90s. It's This is still around today. We still have M theory. There's still a lot we don't understand about M theory. And there are still these five individual string theories. Most of the time people work in those one of those five because those are more well understood. And that is the status of string theory today. Where are we going to go from there? Well, we have to tune in next week to see what are some potentially interesting applications of string theory. I'll see you next week. Please don't forget to go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It really does keep me going. This is my income. I really appreciate it. And uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all the usual YouTube stuff. Thanks for that too. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week.